Today I'm going to show you how to make an image completely out of text and we're creating animal images. For myself I have chosen a seahorse to recreate here and when you're choosing an animal for this project or an image for this project you want to make sure that the animal is cl clearly recognizable and that you can very clearly see the form and the outline of the animal because that's going to help us when we make the animal out of text to be able to quickly recognize the shape of the animal. So once you have the image, go ahead and place it into an 8 by 8 inch document in Photoshop. And then we can go ahead and start creating the image out of text. So to do that, we're going to start, we have two different techniques here. I'm going to start with the first one, which is using the pen tool. So with this pen tool technique, we're going to use the pen tool to create a path that outlines either the uh, contour of the animal, the outer contour, or maybe an inner contour as well. So I'm just going to, for myself here, start out with this outer contour and just start drawing a path. Now remember, when you're drawing a path with the pen tool, if you click and drag to create those uh, curves, Remember that if you hold the Option key and click back on that last anchor you created, it deletes that last handle that's sticking out, and that just gives you a little bit more flexibility as you're going through or control um, to create your path in a little bit more, more of a meticulous manner here. Otherwise, you lose all control, and it's kind of a bumpy path. Um, so once you have this, clearly defined and you can keep going if you'd like but it usually usually works better if you work in smaller paths here. Now I'm going to go to my type tool and I'm going to hover over this path until I see a little swoosh and when I see that I'm going to go ahead and click but actually before I click here I notice that my type is currently at 100 points. I'm going to set that to 12 points before I start typing because it's always better to sm start with a smaller font. Uh, point size for this. So I'm going to hover over until I see the little swoosh along my cursor and then I'm going to click. Now what I see here when I click is there's an X and there's a little uh, circle here at the end of the path and that's showing me that these are the areas I, I'm starting here at the X and if I type I can only type until that circle. Now notice that this didn't fill up my entire path though um, notice also that my alignment also matters here. If I choose a center alignment, my cursor will jump to the center in between this X and the circle. If I choose right alignment, that'll go down to the circle, or left alignment will go back to the X. Now if I want to stretch this X back to the beginning, or say the circle is a little bit closer up here, and I want to stretch that down here to the end, I can do that by holding down the Command key until I get this little cursor with a black um, triangle next to it. And when I see that, I can click and just drag along this path until that goes right to where I want it. So now I can just start typing. And I'm going to type the word seahorse. Now you can mix up your words. If you don't want to type a word um, that is the exact title of the animal, you don't have to do that. Um, you could put something like swim or something like that. Um, but it works really well when you do use the animal's name because then that's clearly def uh, clearly recognizable once you're done. So as you're typing here, I can also go back and still format the text just like I would typically do. You'll also notice that if you have little um, curvy areas, sometimes the text overlaps or it bumps into each other or there are some added spaces. So you might have to go back and change up sizes. You might have to kern in between different letters. So here my O and my R are very close together. If I wanted to kern those so that they were a little bit farther apart, I could hold down the Option key. Oh, this is actually between the H and the O, but I could hold down my Option key and arrow right or left to kern to make that wider or kern to make that a little smaller. So you can go as large as you want on these letters as long as they fit into the space. And I'm going to kern this back a little bit here. And they don't have to match the other letters. Also, if you don't like these preset sizes, you can always go in and change those as you're going along. So here again, now I have this extra space between the H and the O, so I'm going to hold down my Option key and arrow left until I have kerned that space back to where I want it. Um, go into the R here, take my size up, and 
not looking too bad. Uh, go into, I'm going to actually though, turn that back to, go into my S. So you get the point. You can kind of manipulate these things around until they start to take up the form of your animal. And if it starts to get a little too big, this S is starting to look too big now, you can always still go back and change it. So let me go back and make this 90 points. Still too big, I'll make it 80 points. So I could continue this all the way out and I would start to get something that's really looking like the seahorse. You can start to check these things if you turn the visibility off on your image layer and you can see that your form will start to be coming together as you're putting these things together. So I'm actually going to, to get back into this, you can double click in the T and then just click and I'm going to make these quite bigger but I'm not going to worry too much about it being too incredibly large. So let's go back to this part and I'll take this down actually a little bit so it'll all fit in there. So you can see as you start going with this, it gets a little tricky sometimes to select, um, but you can do it. So just have patience with the pen tool because the pen tool and especially typing on the pen tool can be um, a little frustrating at times, but it can create some really nice tech or really nice effects if you take your time with it. So I'm just going to stop there. Turning that off and on, we can start to see that seahorse coming along. Now, the second method of creating shapes that will fit into these different, or creating text that will fit into our shape here, um, is just going to the type tool itself and going off to the side here and drawing a little text box. And then I'm going to type in, I can either do a letter, actually let me do a letter. You can either do a letter or you can do a full word. I'll do a letter and I'll do kind of a large letter here. And then while I am in this text box and I am in the text tool, I'm going to size that text box down just a little bit so it's a little tighter. And then I'm going to click on this T with the swoosh at the top here. And I'm going to go in and choose a style of warp that I want to use for this letter. Now if I wanted to put this letter maybe in this kind of bulgy area of the tummy of the seahorse here, I could inflate it and that would make it kind of expand and fill up that space a little bit. I could go in and create a bulge, which doesn't really do anything horizontally, but vertically you can see. Um, now, sometimes horizontally, depending on the letter, it can make a big difference, but for the S, it didn't much. Um, so I could go ahead and do something like this as well. When I'm happy with it, I can hit OK. I can go in and I can, you know, if I wanted to, rotate this. I could rotate it around. I could position it where I wanted. Scale it up or down. It's kind of a good spot for it. And then hit return when you're happy. Now one thing that you'll notice is that I'm not changing the color of any of these yet. I'm just kind of working right along in that black color, the default black. Um, and that's really fine. If you uh, want to work in a different color, you can too, but we're not going to worry about actually adding color to the seahorse itself until, or to your animal itself, until we're completely done with our project. And I'll show you how to do that too. So again, I can go in, I can warp. Another thing you may notice about warp here is that you can also, you have your basic distortion, you can switch it horizontally or vertically, and then you can do a distortion on top of that initial warp. So I could do a horizontal distortion, a vertical distortion, and that will really start creating quite a, a distinction in the type of warp that you get. So once you're happy again, you can hit OK, go back to your Move tool, and start moving these things and rotating them around. Scaling that down, etc. You just, it's almost like a puzzle. You just kind of want to fit these things together. If there's just a slight bit of overlapping, that's okay as long as you can still read what it is. 
and then hit return when you're happy. So as I'm going through here, I can start to see those things coming together. So you would continue this process all the way out. You could mix in some different letters in areas like the face where maybe an O would work best for this eye area. Um, so have some fun in thinking how to use these different parts of uh, your letters for different parts of your animal, whatever that animal would be. So once you're all done with this, you are going to, let's see here, start to color this. So this is, an, uh, this is a, another seahorse. Well, it's the same seahorse, but this is one that I'm very close to finishing here. Now, I would probably still go in and put a couple more letters just to kind of define the edges of this shape a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with this, at least happy enough to show you how to go ahead and get ready to paint. So once you get to this point and you have all of these type layers, you're going to select all of your type layers and rasterize them. Now I've already done that here, um, but if you have a bunch of type layers, what you'll see instead of this checkerboard is a big T. So what you want to do is click on the bottom type layer, hold your shift key down, click on the top type layer, and then control click or right click, and then you'll get the option to rasterize layers. So go ahead and click on that. After you've clicked on rasterize layers, then right click again and merge layers. So now we have one layer that all of our text is on. Now you don't want to do this step until you're 100% satisfied with the way that you have your letters laid out because you can't do any type editing after you've done this step. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and hold down the command key, click in the thumbnail, and then create a new layer, command shift N. Then we'll turn off the visibility to our original type layer, and now we can start painting. So I'm going to go to my brush tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm in a basic brush here. If I go to my brush window, I can make sure that my spacing is to zero. I can size my brush up or down by using the bracket keys. And if I zoom in here, I can start painting these actual colors from the seahorse into my letters. So remember, we're just painting in this layer that, um, that is above or below your original text layer. Actually, mine went below there, but it's uh, typically above. And what we'll do is with our brush, selected here, I'm going to hold down my option key and get this orange color, and then I'm just going to start painting through. If you don't like something, you can always command option Z or command Z, and I'm going to continue on here painting this um, just with my paintbrush selecting occasionally with an option key, and that will create these colors that you'll be seeing here, and those colors should mimic your original image and it will look really neat when it's all done. The one thing that you have to be careful of is just make sure that you're actually painting all of the colors that you need. Now you can go through and just select as I've been doing here or you could go through and get a base color. If you wanted to get a solid orange you could expand that up. You could paint the entire thing orange and then you could go in, size your brush back down, Grab a color here and maybe work on a low opacity. So take your opacity down a little bit and you can just go back and softly start to blend some of those colors in. And that can look really nice as well because that just gives you kind of a smoother transition. So either way we'll work and you know experiment a little bit with both to see what you like the best. Um, but kind of have some fun and make sure that the most important thing, of course, is that at the very end, you can recognize your actual animal for what it is. So let's kind of zoom out here. So my seahorse is starting to look pretty good. Um, I can do a Command D to deselect that and see that that's starting to come together. But of course, I would want to add even more detail with color. Um, and you can always do that again just by holding that Command key down, clicking in that original thumbnail layer, and then clicking back in your layer to paint. So good luck, have some fun creating some uh, cool animal images, and have a good time.